Hi, I'm Christopher. I'm leading Liverpool's coverage of the Eurovision Song Contest on behalf of the Liverpool Echo. And here with me is Mr Eurovision himself, the Executive Supervisor of the Eurovision Song Contest. How are you? I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very excited. And I know a lot of people in Liverpool are excited to hear your thoughts on the contest and hear your thoughts on how Liverpool's turned us out. Should we start with Liverpool? We should start with Liverpool. Okay. Now, I, I have to say, I mean, since uh, the first moment that I sat my foot in this city, I felt that this is, this is going to be a phenomenal Eurovision Song Contest host city. Um, and it's great to see that it has become that. I mean, everyone from the city um, uh, administration to begin with, but now also seeing local communities and small businesses really embracing the Eurovision Song Contest fully is just wonderful to see. And it's great because, uh, you know, you get, you get to uh, make the most out of 100%. it. 100%. Yeah, so happy and about that. There's bigger cities around the UK, so I'm just kind of curious to know what it was about Liverpool to make you guys think this is where we need to have it. Yeah, well, well that is actually an important uh, part of it because we, there, there are a lot of hard factors that we need to look at, like the, the requirements for hosting an event of this size. It's the, uh, a lot of stuff around the, the venue and the arena, uh, but also around laying uh, spaces that we need, like the one we're in at the moment, uh, the de delegation bubble, etc. So it's quite massive uh, as, you know, uh, the, the, uh, as an event around this, the, the main site. But, so, so, but, but apart from those hard factors, I think the soft factor of a city that's really engaged, really enthusiastic, uh, has the experience, has the um, expertise, uh, but also the passion to, um, yeah, like I said, to, to make the most of it. And I think Liverpool has that. Liverpool's always felt like a family for the community and everyone coming in as well. And mm. with the long lineage of musical excellence coming out here, yeah. it's, we kind of knew we would knock it out of the park, but it's amazing to see it come to full fruition. Yeah, and I think that's a great connection, you know, between Liverpool and the Eurovision Song Contest because of that. And there's so much going on this year. We have a Euro festival, which has never been done before. You can't go around the city without feeling Eurovision. How does that feel to see like, Liverpool just embrace it so much in a way that's never been done before? Yeah, I mean, we should just move here, all of us, and do this here every year. Every year. <laughs> it's well, if great. We, if we win this year, we can just keep everything up and just yeah, continue yeah, next just year. Keep, keep it up. Yeah, we'll come back. Is the Euro festival something you would like to see every year? Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that we have learned uh, and seen this year that, that we can take with us, even if we do go elsewhere. Uh, yeah. and there, it's very different this year as well, because it is a collaboration between two nations, something we haven't really seen before in modern Eurovision. So there's that aspect as well. How do you feel Liverpool has done to represent Ukrainian art, music and culture? Well, I think, I think uh, Liverpool and BBC and the shows have done a phenomenal job with that. I, I, there's, there's no question this is a special edition of the Eurovision Song Contest. It's completely unique. It's something that we've never seen before. Uh, and I don't think anyone is going to miss the message. Uh, and it's all really well executed. I mean, walking around Liverpool, not that I have seen as much as I would have liked because I'm in here all the time, but... Uh, that's normal, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, but when I do walk around like I did, did this morning, uh, yeah, you see tributes to Ukraine everywhere. I know the Eurovision Minister, Stuart Andrews, said that Liverpool's plans were initially branded as ambitious. But do you think we've met everything that we promised to do? Absolutely. I mean, you have to remember also that the Eurovision Song Contest has not been in the UK for 25 years. And this event has changed a lot in that time. So... I think when we first moved around and spoke to the different cities here, uh, people didn't always understand what this was. Uh, and I think after this year in Liverpool, people will know. And the change that we've seen in the contest since we last held is just night and day. Mm -hmm. So being such a huge part of your vision yourself, does it, can you feel that shift happening every single year? I think there's a special shift going on in the UK. I mean, what, what, what I've seen in the, in the past couple of years is that the Eurovision Song Contest is growing phenomenally uh, in general, not least in all the um, sort of digital channels and platforms that we have. Uh, the fan base is growing. Um, the, the viewers are, are also increasing. Uh, we're getting partnerships with, you know, blue chip consumer brands that we 
didn't used to get partnerships with. So across the board, Eurovision is really expanding and growing, but it's especially growing in the big markets. It's amazing. Um, so in Spain and France and Italy and in the UK, which is great for, for Eurovision. A lot of the big five as well. Yeah. There was a controversial shift this year with the voting, but it's trying something new every year and it, you know, it didn't work and we went back to basics. Can you just tell me a little bit about that decision to try, yeah. just to try something new? Yeah, it wasn't the voting, uh, but it was the, I suppose you're referring to the presentation yes. in, the of, first... in the semifinals yes. of the qualifiers. Yeah. That's not to be confused with the voting, because yes, the voting sorry. is separate. Uh, yeah, I mean, every year we try to work on the creative development of the shows to try and bring something new to them, whilst also staying true to the traditions of the Eurovision Song Contest. That's a fine balance. Uh, this year, uh, the producers wanted to try out something new in the semi-final reveal. Um, we tried it out, we saw it, we didn't like it, changed our mind. 100%. And has there ever been anything that you or your team have been like, oh, we would love to try this, but you just haven't got around to it yet? Oh, yeah. There's plenty of ideas still out there. Uh, but, um, yeah, you'll just have to keep watching. We'll have to watch next year to tune into the other changes as well. Yeah. So you've had such a massive role in the Eurovision family for years. Do you remember your very first contest? Oh, yeah. Uh, the, the, the first one I went to? Well, the first one you went well, to well, and the first sword. one you had a key role in. Um, okay. Uh, the first one I went to, I believe, was in Helsinki, 2006. Seven. Seven. <laughs> Thanks, Dave. <laughs> um, yeah. Was that what, Alexander Rebecca? Where were we in 2006? Athens. I didn't go to Athens, but I was in, I was, yeah, I was just starting out then, but I, I never went to Athens. Uh, yeah, so Helsinki, 07. And do you, does that hold like a special place for you? I know everyone kind of remembers their first contest. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's funny because I, I was working with something called Melody Festival at the time, which is the uh, Swedish national selection to Eurovision, which is a huge festival in its own right. Um, and I'd been working on that for a while um, with my good friend and colleague, and we had been trying to convince the music industry to you know, to give us the best acts. And they had finally given us one of the best Swedish bands, which was a real band with major success as a proper, you know, real band. Uh, they're called The Ark, amazing band. And they won Melody Festival. And we thought, yes, you know, we've cracked it now. We've done it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it just didn't go very well. Uh, 18th place, was it? Oh, you don't know that? Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, I mean, the expectations were high because this band was, was massive in Sweden. It was like pretty much the biggest band. And, you know, everyone thought we were going to win. But, uh, yeah, I think we finished in something like 18th place. It just goes to show that you can have these big, huge names, but, like, with the Eurovision... Yeah, books, something else. It's yeah, so we learned a lot from that. And we had a couple of rough years there in... in um, uh, 07, 08, uh, 09, and then, yeah managed to turn it around, and, and then uh, did pretty well after that. Now, I'm obviously from Ireland, you are from Sweden. Mm -hmm. We currently hold the title for yeah. most wins. Yeah, and although I represent no country any longer. No country, you're a neutral party. Yeah. But if Sweden does win this year with Lorraine, who is you know, a very strong contender, will be drawing. How do you feel you know, the crown might be leaving Ireland? Well, um, I think it's a wake-up call for Ireland, Ireland to get back up in the saddle and start uh, competing <laughs> properly again. I did love this year's act, well, I have gee. to say. And, uh, and uh, yeah, shame we didn't get them through to the final. But, uh, yeah, Ireland, you know, is a superpower in this. It's very exciting to see. And we're right in the middle of the 2023 contest as well. And there's only a few days to go until it's over. Everything that you've seen from the city of Liverpool and, you know, the acts this year, how do you think that Liverpool's Eurovision Song Contest will be remembered in the long run? I think it will be remembered as something very unique, something very generous, something very emotional, uh, something incredibly welcoming, well-executed, professional uh, and spectacular. I can't wait to see it. And thank you so much for speaking with us. And thank you so much for speaking with the Liverpool Echo. Thank you. Very excited. Thank you.